Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Tracy Cushing, and I'll be speaking today about women's health and climate change, the impact of gender. Women suffer unique impacts from climate change because of their specific physiologic needs throughout the life cycle. <clears throat> this is why gender is a valuable lens through which to view climate health. We'll review some of the specifics of climate health that affect women differently and discuss the role of gender in climate and policy planning. Climate change is a risk multiplier for gender-based gender -based health disparities. Women have unique health needs, placing them at specific risk of suffering from climate-sensitive disasters. Compounding these biologic vulnerabilities are cultural constructs, which amplify risk on a regional scale. This effect is greatest in societies where women have lower socioeconomic and political status. Understanding the unique effects of climate change on women's health is the first step toward ensuring that policies move beyond traditional separations of health, gender, and environment to embrace proactive gender-based solutions to protecting women's health and mobilizing their vast social potential in mitigating and adapting to the effects of climate change. A lack of gender disaggregated health data restricts conclusive understanding of the thresholds of exposure for harm from environmental pollutants, as well as for pregnant women and children. Thus, gender is an important lens through which to view climate. As temperatures and heat waves increase, preeclampsia, gestational hypertension, and preterm delivery all increase in pregnant women as well. Women are susceptible to the unique effects of rising temperatures during heat waves because of unique physiologic characteristics, such as a higher working metabolic rate, reduced heat dissipation through sweating, and less effective radiative cooling due to greater subcutaneous adipose tissue. All of these predispose women to heat-related illness. In particular, climate change and the unique physiology of pregnancy puts women at greater risk of complications during pregnancy from rising temperatures. And indeed, it has been shown that provision of cooling systems such as air conditioning or reflective surfaces for maternity hospital wards has reduced the need for neonatal intensive care. Cook stoves and heating elements that use biofuels produce particulate matter, carbon monoxide, and hydrocarbons. As women are both largely responsible for cooking in many communities and spend a greater proportion of time indoors, they are at increased risk of exposure to these toxins, being more susceptible to their effects. Outdoors during episodes of high ambient air pollution, women suffer greater deposition of inhaled particles and have increased deaths from cardiopulmonary disease in the aftermath of severe, pulmon of severe pollution effects. Poor air quality has been correlated with adverse reproductive outcomes as well, such as stillbirth, congenital defects, intrauterine growth retardation, and low birth weight. Globally, there is increasing frequency of climate-related disasters, including hurricanes, wildfires, and flooding. During such disasters, women suffer disproportionate mortality. And when women have unequal access to basic goods, their relative mortality during disasters is increased. Although there is a dearth of statistical data on women and the poor post-disaster or on rates of sexual violence in the aftermath of climate-related disasters and during migration, the Red Cross report from 2007 states women and girls are at high risk of sexual violence, sexual exploitation, and abuse, trafficking, and domestic violence in the aftermath of disasters. There's been a growing recognition of transaction, transactional sex as a response to forced migration and food shortages. Different than traditional sex work, there is a transactional nature to this relationship based on the need for food, post-disaster resources such as fuel, wood, and transportation. As rising temperatures and shifting rain, rainfall impair crop, livestock, and fishery yields, there is increasing food insecurity around the world. Globally, women suffer from higher rates of anemia and malnutrition at baseline, and thus are even more sensitive to climate-driven food insecurity because of increased nutritional needs, particularly during menstruation, pregnancy, and nursing. Nutritional scarcity can be further exacerbated by cultural practices that sometimes prioritize the feeding of men and children over women. 
Freshwater resources are also strained globally with areas of increasing scarcity near areas of large population density. In some regions, women may use up to 85% of their daily calorie intake by carrying water. And as water availability changes and they are forced to seek water from both geographically and more dangerous sources, they are forced to use even greater amounts of energy procuring fresh water as well. As women are the primary household members responsible for water procurement, they are often around standing water sources and other areas that can place them in close contact with mosquito breeding grounds. Pregnant women are particularly susceptible to mosquito-borne illnesses. Because of higher CO2 production during pregnancy, CO2 is a chemoattractant for mosquitoes. They are more at risk of getting bitten, and once infected, are at greater risk of complications and severity of illness. Their risk of severe malaria is three times higher than that of non-pregnant women. Limited or total lack of access to prenatal and obstetrical care further worsen pregnancy and outcomes in the infectious disease setting. However, inclusion of women in climate change policy is integral to the process because of their vital role in almost all aspects of community and household responses to climate change. The, particip the participation and inclusion of women has been shown to increase cooperation across political and social boundaries, as well as to broaden responsiveness to individual and social needs in climate action plans. In 2017, the UN called for a gender action plan to incorporate a gendered perspective in all elements of mitigation, adaptation, technology, and finance. In 2015, something called the Sendai Framework, an international covenant was adopted to establish common goals and standards for risk disaster reduction and formalize climate change as a disaster risk multiplier to women, recognizing women as important stakeholders in risk reduction. Its goals require participation of all stakeholders and recognize women's roles as powerful agents of social, of social change within that framework. In summary, although gender has been increasingly factored into climate change projects and policy, progress has been slow in reducing gender-based health disparities and in mobilizing women as a vast social resource for climate change mitigation, adaptation, and disaster risk reduction. Women's unique social roles, roles within families, groups, and societies at large afford opportunities for promoting effective solutions to combat climate change through sustainability, disaster risk reduction, and health threat mitigation. Women have unique physiology and unique lifestyle cycles, including pregnancy and menstruation, that put them at greater risk of the effects of climate change, which is why involving them in policy is of the utmost importance. These are a few of the references that I looked at for putting this talk together, and I sure do appreciate your attention.